Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In this video, I'm going to be giving you my top 7 picks for the most underrated weapons in Elden Ring. I am just looking at melee weapons, I'm not going to be reviewing the likes of bows, seals or crossbows etc. And please do let me know if there is any other weapons you'd love to add to the list that you love using that you just never hear anyone talking about. So straight away, we will move into the first one, Great Stars. I actually started making this list before patch 1.06, and I've only just realised that the Great Stars is way more easily accessible now than it used to be. So it used to be that this was only obtainable on a guarded carriage by looting one of the caravan escorts, specifically the one in the Altus Plateau, travelling on the road southwest of the Road of Iniquity site of Grace. However, this is now also dropped when you defeat Magnus the Beast Claw, which is the new NPC introduced as part of White Mask Vary's questline. The three main reasons I'm going to call out that I absolutely love this weapon are, firstly, it can be infused with basically any Ash of War and it can also be buffed with magic and consumables. So unlike most other weapons on this list that have a unique Ash of War and can't be changed or buffed, this one is very customizable. The second reason is that it has strike damage, so it's fantastic against them pesky enemies that are really resistant to most damage types, such as imps, golems, and the crystal miners. And finally, it has inherent blood loss buildup. It is an absolutely phenomenal weapon for strength builds with fairly low stat requirements and a great weapon for you to try out during your next playthrough. With the customization options, I have infused it with cold so that it also does frost buildup and I've also infused it with the Ash of War Waves of Darkness. Though, as I say, there are many, many different ways that you can take this already incredible weapon. So now we'll move on to the second one, the Prelate's Inferno Crozier. This next weapon is a guaranteed drop from a Fire Prelate wielder inside Fort Live near the Seethwater Terminus. This hammer has a unique R2, which is a heavy upward swing, and you'll see nearer the end of this clip that it will cause smaller enemies to be flung into the air. But the main reason I'm recommending this is for its Ash of War. It can be infused with other Ashes of War, but as you can see here, the Prelate's Charge is amazing. You finish off with the animation of a Charged R2, but also you leave a Trail of Fire which does a tremendous amount of damage to enemies caught in its path. It does have one of the highest strength requirements in the game of 45, but that's reduced down to 30 if you two-hand it, which you probably want to. It does a tremendous amount of damage, and if you're going for a big, beefy hammer, this is definitely one of the best ones in the game. And it looks incredibly sick as well. Who doesn't want a giant red flaming hammer? Bigger than their whole entire self. Now we will take a look at number three, the Sword of Saint Trina. Again, this weapon has just been buffed as part of the 1.06 update. So I debated whether to still include this on the list, but I still personally feel like it's way too underrated. And honestly, I'm considering doing a sleep only playthrough where I use nothing but this, sleep pots, sleep arrows, just everything and anything that puts enemies to sleep. Because I think this is a really underutilized status effect and this sword is absolutely god tier and does not get the recognition it deserves. I mean, just look as this knight is coming up to me. Straight away, I'm going to put this cloud of sleep on the floor and he'll run through it and the status effect will start to affect him. Then we're going to do it one more time as he's turning around. He goes to sleep, he falls off the horse, and he is immediately one shot by my absolutely god tier weapon. And don't forget as well that once you've cast the Mists of Slumber, you coat your sword in the sleep buildup as well, so even just your normal attacks will continue to build up sleep on your enemies. It may not be the most powerful sword in the game, but if you build your stats around it, 
and use the correct potions and spells, you can still make this deal tremendous amounts of damage whilst having that permanent, amazing sleep buildup. Incredible weapon worthy of being in your next build. So now we'll move into number four, Serpent Bone Blade. This one is given as a reward for completing the second letter in the Volcano Manor quest lines. It looks very awesome and has inherent poison buildup. This combined with the double slash Ash of War that it comes equipped with means that it can dish out tremendous amounts of damage and build up poison quicker than almost anything else in the game. Also, fun fact, as it says in the item description, this deals lethal poison and this isn't just flavor text. This is an actual thing that I learned whilst doing this video. Lethal poison only lasts about a third of the amount of time as regular poison but deals double damage per tick. Meaning if both are left for their full duration, lethal poison will do less damage, but it does it at a higher, more concentrated rate. So if you keep refreshing the lethal poison of this blade, it will deal tremendous amounts of damage overall. Also, if you combine this with talismans such as the Rotten Winged Insignia, Kindred of Rot's Exaltation, and the Shard of Alexander, you can make the poison proc almost instantly and just deal stupid amounts of damage using the sword slash. Overall, another very underrated weapon because of the fact that people are stuck on other katanas such as the Moon Veil and the Rivers of Blood. But as the Rivers of Blood has recently been nerfed, hopefully people will also give this one a chance. So now that we're done with that one, we'll move on to number five, the Bolt of Grand Sax. Considering this is a legendary weapon, I very rarely hear this be talked about. It's got one of the furthest reaching skills in the game and is one of the few elemental imbued weapons that doesn't require faith, int or arcane to wield. You can wield this by just using a quality build and if people don't know, a quality build is a split between strength and dex with no magic stats. So you can deal a really decent chunk of lightning damage without needing to spec into the magic stats. This also deals bonus damage against dragons and ancient dragons. And if I didn't mention it already, just look at the range on this weapon. You can fully charge the R2 as well to do even more damage. It is tremendous at picking off foes if you don't have a real solid ranged option. And it is very, very missable. You must acquire this from Laindell, the royal capital, before defeating Malekith and changing the state of the world, or it will be lost to you forever during the remainder of your playthrough. It has quite high stat requirements compared to most other weapons on this list. But if you're going for a pure strength and dex build, it's a phenomenal way to add some elemental damage and some ranged attacks into your arsenal. So now we'll move into the next one, the Knight Rider Flail. Okay, so I'd be lying if I told you that part of the reason I put this on the list wasn't because of the fact that you get to cosplay and roleplay as a Knight's Cavalry. Because they are incredibly badass and they have appeared in many of my videos previously. I just love being able to roleplay as a Knight's Cavalry and I really wish you could kit out Torrent to look like one of their steeds. They are so cool. And this flail is just straight up a massive improvement on the standard flail that you get right here at the Gatefront Ruins very early on in the game. Just like the first weapon we covered, it's one of the few solid options in the game for a strike weapon, which means it's gonna be really effective against them stone and crystal enemies. Also, it has really high passive blood loss buildup especially when combined with its weapon skill, the Spinning Chain. It's got really solid base stats and fairly low stat requirements as well with amazing scaling in decks. It can also be infused with pretty much every other Ash of War and admittedly there are many better Ashes of War than the Spinning Chain so you could make this already solid underrated weapon even better whilst simultaneously allowing you to cosplay as the Knight's Cavalry. And who wouldn't want that? 
Also, just like a couple of other weapons on this list, it upgrades with plain old smithing stones. And as there are way more ancient dragon smithing stones in this game than there are somber ancient dragon smithing stones, it means it's much easier to max it out and get it to plus 25. So now we will move on to my final pick in this list, the Sacred Relic Sword. Yes, you can't get this weapon until you have literally completed the game, but that's why this list is tailored around underrated weapons that you should use for your next playthrough. Because you cannot use this until you have already defeated the Elden Beast and brought the Elden Beast Remembrance to Enya at the Round Table Hold. And the main reason I'm reviewing this is because of its weapon skill, the Wave of Gold, which is just stupid. It's got some of the most ridiculous damage in the game. It can be buffed with various different spells, talismans and physics. And its range and arc are just insane. It does require fairly high faith as well as dex to be able to wield. So it has fairly niche stat requirements and you definitely want to tailor your build around it if you are going to fully utilize this weapon. Also, because it's a great sword, it can be power stance with the likes of the Blasphemous Blade or the Sword of Milos. And if you don't know why this is such a big deal, it's because both of these weapons can give you rapid healing when we're talking about the Blasphemous Blade or rapid regeneration of your FP when we're talking about the Sword of Milos, which means you can keep spamming its ability even more than normal. They are my top seven picks for the most underrated weapons in Elden Ring that you should definitely try out during your next playthrough. Let me know if you've got any more. I would love to hear it. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.